Today we'll be traveling to the home for 350 residents on Protection Island aboard a tiny private ferry boat to the Gulf Islands in British Columbia, Canada. This is known for a lot of things, one of which is its home to Canada's only floating pub. Dingy Dock Pub is a one and only place of its kind as a Canadian beer pub. We take a visit to Mimi's kitchen, where she is preparing an easy, tasty recipe for a little soup. All right, I'm back, and my lentils are ready. You have to fish out. So lying is a continuum, another that's a $20 word. In our Live Squared segment, Greta Blackburn begins our discussion on authenticity and more. Yes, I've been accused of being annoyingly authentic. So yes. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome to Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared. I'm Andy Asher, your host. Our guest is New York City psychotherapist Pamela Garber, who hopes to release an Uber-style mobile phone app called Never Walk Alone. She came up with the idea from her own experience on the streets of New York. And so this would be Uber for pedestrians. And welcome to week number two. And I am super excited about this week's show. More than 10 years ago, I launched bloomerboomer.com as the Huffington Post for people over 55. We introduced epic content that evolved with the growth of video, letting us talk with thought leaders and creators, newsmakers and innovators. With the launch of Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared in January of 2023, we entered into something new. These will be long-form, narrowly focused seasonal shows I hope you can dive into. At the end of the show, I will tell you two ways you can support the show and keep Let's Talk Food Travel Live Square going. Let's begin by checking in with Mimi in her kitchen and find out what she's up to. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to make some lentil soup. And uh, it's vegetarian. If you want to make it with meat, you can, but... Today I'm going to make it just vegetarian. I'm going to start dicing all my vegetables. I have some yellow onion, carrots, celery. I dice all this and then saute them in a, just a, two tablespoons of olive oil. And then go from there. We will check back just a little bit later. In travel, I spent six months reporting from a tourist perspective along the Sea of Sea in British Columbia's southern Gulf Islands off the eastern coast of Vancouver Island. A haven for wildlife along the Sea of Sea in British Columbia's southern Gulf Islands off the eastern coast of Vancouver Island. Sheltered waters teem with seals and otters and orcas and porpoises. Today we explore the rare ecosystems and unique Mediterranean-like climate at a tiny place called Protection Island. We are heading today to Protection Island, British Columbia, on a tiny private ferry boat that locals depend on for grocery shopping in the bustling downtown of Nanaimo, British Columbia. And Protection Island is a tiny island about 20 minutes northeast of Nanaimo. It was originally named Douglas Island after James Douglas, the first governor of the colony of Vancouver Island and British Columbia. It was renamed Protection Island in 1960, but it has a much more colorful past. After about 20 minutes on the water, we arrive at Dingy Dock Pub on the island. The pub is Canada's only registered floating pub. But there are other things that make this place unique, uh, which includes people using golf carts primarily to get around without any cars around. Now, for people who have to commute to work, well, what they do is they'll jump into their kayak or get onto the ferry or they'll have their own motorboat because it's not too far from the next biggest city nearby, which is Nanaimo. More about that colorful past. On January 17, 1853, the two killers of the local Scotchman Shepherd were tracked down that same day on the southern point of the island, which became known as Execution Point. On January 14th of 1913, the captain of a ship ran aground at Execution Point. The ship exploded moments after the crew safely escaped, but the explosion shook buildings back in the town of Nanaimo. No one was injured. My advice, make sure when you come to the island that the Dingy Dock Pub is open for business. One 
important tip to know is the Dingy Doc Hub is not open every single day, so if it's high on your list, you better double check before you depart. Meantime, let's check in at Mimi's kitchen. Back. I finished uh, dicing all my vegetables. My The oil is hot, so we're just going to start sauteing this. I'm going to get my garlic ready, which is five cloves of garlic. And then I put all my spices here, coriander, cumin, uh, turmeric and chili flakes. I put some here, like that, and this is what I do. I like it better because it gives it gives a very good um, taste. Okay, don't forget to do this, like that. Mm. Mm -hmm. There you go. did it and this is how I do it. So and then you add this to the vegetables, to the onions and you soak it a little bit more. You let them get a little bit translucent before you add anything else. Before you add anything else you just <laughs> yeah there you go. Yes. You add the rest of the um, spices, tomato paste, fresh tomatoes, bay leaves, and you're, um, yeah, and you're ready to put your lentils in there and your broth. And you, you will have a wonderful, wonderful lentil soup. You know, spicy, you can always put more spices if you like. I make it a little not not too spicy, you know. It's uh, so I think it's time for me to add my tomato paste. Gives this Omani taste. You know, it just gives you a nice depth on your uh, in your in your cooking in your soup. So you add a little of that. There you go. You add all the spices. I put them all together, we put, a, I love cumin, so I I put a bunch of it. For one pound of uh, lentils, I put one tablespoon of coriander, one tablespoon of cumin, half tablespoon of turmeric, and some chili flakes, or a little pepper, or harissa, whatever you have spicy you put. All right, now you add your tomatoes, all right. All right. I think it's time to put my uh, my uh, my broth and uh, lentils. Okay. Lentils go in with the uh, bay leaves. Okay. Oh yeah. There you go. Mmm, 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 mmm. There you go. And the hot broth. Homemade vegetable broth. You can do chicken broth. You can do water. Now, I'm ready to put salt. And pepper. And let it cook. See you later when it's all made up and I will show you how it looks. There you go. Talk to you later. Thanks, Mimi. I am looking forward to it. It's been a cold and rainy one here and nothing sounds better than lentil soup. Never Walk Alone is a chilling reminder for anyone who is a walker, whether to work or school or simply for exercise. A New York City psychotherapist, Pamela Garber, created the concept for an app after listening to her clients' fears of violent crime in the city. Then in June, she was randomly punched by a homeless person while walking on the Upper East Side of New York, and police were unable to arrest her attacker. Pamela Garber is our guest today and talks about her 
personal nightmare that changed her focus in hopes of helping others. Everyone knows Uber, and so this would be Uber for pedestrians. You uh, um, are a member of this intranet that accesses the app, and of course you're vetted to be able to be a member. There's been some you know, checks and balances, let's say, for you to become a vetted member, but now you're a member. And uh, through that, you then look in your phone and, and utilize, you know, putting your address in and your picture is there already with your cell. And through technology, you're paired with others in your area who are also vetted members. I mean, you could be accused of pandering to people's fears, but I guess these are real fears, aren't they? Yeah, and the pandering I usually associate with, with something being forced. And I'm a big free will person, as the libertarian in me. So the freedom of people deciding to participate in something, you know, is something that is a key essential ingredient to this. Do you have any advice for others who are, uh, you know, pondering the idea of an entrepreneurial future for themselves? Yeah, well, okay, so writing down what their idea is, you know, writing down who their idea is best suited for, writing down, big into writing, you know, writing down why they want to be the one to participate in this idea and how uh, you, with anything in life, you want to know your strengths and weaknesses, right? You want to know your assets and liabilities. Write all that out too. Sweat equity counts as an asset. Literally, if you're someone who's tenacious and you have a lot of energy, but maybe not the capital, still you still have assets. So writing down your assets and liabilities. Well, lots of luck. Keep us up to date on how things are going. And uh, I'm excited for you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I wish her so much success in her new venture. In today's Live Squared segment, my friend Greta Blackburn and I vowed to learn and improve our communication skills. We turned to Julian Treasure, a top-rated international speaker on sound and communication skills. So we are back, and I'm obviously not alone. Joining me is the multi-talented Greta Blackburn, Hi, Greta. Hi, Andy. How are you? I'm good. It's always great to see you. Now, look at this. I just want to let you know that this show is called Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared. Now, we're together here for the Live Squared part of the name, which means, you know, the show means it's streamed live, okay? And we are about encouraging people to live life authentically. Uh, Greta, that kind of feels like you, or at least I think it does, doesn't it? Yes, I've been accused of being annoyingly authentic. So, yes. Well, now, since the show is about uh, speaking and listening, it made sense to hear from someone, you know, who teaches, who teaches that. And his name is Julian Treasure, who has given a few talks at TED conferences. The human voice. It's the instrument we all play. It's the most powerful sound in the world, probably. It's the only one that can start a war or say, I love you. And yet many people have the experience that when they speak, people don't listen. So there you have it. He talks about the seven deadly sins of speaking. First, gossip. Speaking ill of somebody who's not present. Not a nice habit, and we know perfectly well the person gossiping five minutes later will be gossiping about us. You know, gossipers tend to talk, and they, you know, if they're talking behind somebody else's back, they'll probably talk behind our back. I hate to think it, you know, Andy, people may be talking behind our backs right now. In oh, fact, yeah. talking behind our backs, that would be like in front of us. But anyway, I get your point. Second, judging. We know people who are like this in conversation, and it's very hard to listen to somebody if you know that you're being judged and found wanting at the same time. I'm gonna judge that comment. I'm gonna judge it in the affirmative. That's a good comment. So okay. judging can be yeah. good. Third, negativity. You can fall into this. My mother in the last years of her life became very, very negative, and it's hard to listen. I remember one day I said to her, it's October the 1st today, and she said, I know, isn't it dreadful? <laughs> It's hard to listen when somebody's that negative. 
And another form of negativity, complaining. Well, this is the national art of the UK. It's, it's our national sport. We complain about the weather, about sport, about politics, about everything. But actually, complaining is viral misery. It's not spreading sunshine and lightness in the world. We've all met this guy. Maybe we've all been this guy. Some people have a blame thrower. They just pass it on to everybody else and don't take responsibility for their actions. And again, it's one of the seven deadly sins of life. Here's the deal. And he uses the, and I love this, he uses the um, phrase blame thrower. There's nothing more, what's the word? I'm going to be judgmental here. Sorry. I'm not gossiping though. Um, there's nothing more, in my opinion, loathsome, going to throw in a $10 word there, than somebody who can't own their mistakes. Here's the deal. If you've done something screwy and you just own it and you just say, look, I screwed up. There's nowhere to go from there. No one can continue to be mad. But on the other hand, if you come up with a bunch of Weasley excuses and it's some, it's like, oh, it just compounds the whole thing and makes it worse. So own your stuff and it's over. Penultimate, the six of the seven, embroidery, exaggeration. It demeans our language, actually, sometimes. For example, if I see something that really is awesome, what do I call it? <laughs> and then, of course, this exaggeration becomes lying, out and out lying, and we don't want to listen to people we know are lying to. Someone will lie about a little thing, you know they'll lie about big things. So lying is a continuum, another, that's a $20 word, that has no escape. You're either honest, and he talks about integrity, he talks about honesty, so you're either in honesty and integrity, or you're a weasel and you're a liar. And finally, dogmatism. The confusion of facts with opinions. When those two things get conflated, you're listening into the wind. You know, somebody is bombarding you with their opinions as if they were true. It's difficult to listen to that. Yeah, they tend to think that their opinions are kind of like the rules or like mm -hmm. the laws are mm -hmm. empirical, a $50 word. Um, yeah, that's not fun because people who, are, and here's the other thing, Andy, you know, I'm in the longevity world. I'm all about health. I'm all about all of that stuff. Um, when you're not open to learning, you start a little bit, you start to kind of die. You know, you're not growing, you're not evolving. You're moving in that other direction, you know, in the ground, gone. So you want to stay open. You want your mind to stay open because that's one of the signs of, of youth. It keeps you young. You're interested, you're vibrant, you're, you're looking into things. Nothing worse than somebody who thinks they know it all. You know, and I think, uh, I think curiosity goes along with that, to, to remain curious. Still be curious about the world. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm a big fan of learning classes. I'm a big learning of enrolling in things you know nothing about and learning about it because uh, we want to keep our minds, they're very, pla the brain is very plastic and it can really keep learning and then growing. And we want that to happen. We don't want it to go like this and get all dogmatic. It's a hallmark of of youth and vitality is staying open to the world, staying open to new ideas. Because again, when you get shut down, when you are dogmatic, eh, that's kind of stagnant. He talks about hail. Hail fellow well met. I actually knew what that acronym stood for because he, he made it very simple and easy to understand and also just very spot on. So uh, yeah, it's a really good one. So what do they stand for? See if you can guess. The H, honesty, of course. Being true in what you say, being straight and clear. The A is authenticity, just being yourself. A friend of mine described it as standing in your own truth, which I think is a lovely way to put it. The I is integrity, being your word, actually doing what you say and being somebody people can trust. And the L is love. One of his coaching tips to help speak more clearly uh, here is his voice exercise. The pros call this the siren. It's really good. It starts with we and goes to or. The we is high, the or is low. So you go, we, or, we. Fantastic. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you, Steve. Thank you.
the whole point of his speech is how to get people to really listen to you, how to be heard. So there's two things here. Number one, people need to be more generous in their listening, a term I stole from Werner Earhart with the S uh-huh. training. Be generous in your listening. Don't be thinking ahead to what you're going to say. Um, and the other thing is, because he talks about vocal, um, your your resonance and your register and all that stuff. Vocal fry. Here's the gossip. There are There's a news person on TV. I'm actually not going to name her name, but I'm talking about somebody very specific. And I'm going to be judgmental. The vocal fry. People that talk like this. Yeah, I know. And it, it's like, oh, my God, get a vocal coach. Do something. I hear people in restaurants that have vocal fry or have annoying voices. And I think... How do they get through life with that voice? So people, 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 record yourself. Listen, do you want to hear yourself talk? Because he makes this point. People vote for president, according to him, because of a deep chest register. People vote for a deeper voice. If you want people voting for you, listening to you, cultivate your voice. Please, please, please. We. Oh, uh, um, uh. you know, I learned a lot. Hopefully others did too. Be careful what you ask for, Andy. You asked me to come on. Here we go. I'm sure glad I did. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Here's how you can contact Julian Treasure. Before we go, let's check in one last time in Mimi's kitchen. All right, I'm back. And my lentils are ready. You have to fish out the bay leaves you don't want to eat that so fish it out before you start serving because you don't want anybody to bite into that okay all right this is the second one we're done i'm gonna add my chopped parsley and coriander see that oh so good now stir a little bit in there Look how pretty it is. It's beautiful. Woo! Time to eat. I'm going to serve it in a this uh, super cute bowl that I got uh, from Andy one day. So I love it. There you go. Oh, my, my. Et voila. Mm-hmm. And guess what I'm going to add in here? I made some jalapenos you know i crush them fresh jalapenos not cooked crush them put the garlic and salt and olive oil and just leave them in the in the fridge and then you put a little bit in your soup or in your food and it gives you the heat and a wonderful wonderful taste of the mediterranean and of course never forget the Lemon juice. There you go. This is so pretty. It smells so good. Voila. Until next time. Hey, Mimi, we look forward to what's on tap next week. And thank you so much for tuning in to Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared. If you enjoyed this episode or learned something new, I want to tell you two ways you can support the show and keep Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared going. Number one, get yourself subscribed. Every week I am bringing on the influencers and people who can teach you something or have something interesting to share. So take a moment to hit that subscribe button. And number two, this is the ultimate way to support Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared, and it takes less than a minute. You can write something short and sweet like, I love this show, it's changed your life or something you learned from it. I'm not exaggerating that I read reviews every day and every single one, whether short or long, it means everything to me. The more reviews means the higher we rank on all the algorithms, which means bigger guests. So take a minute to leave a review. I am eternally grateful. And thank you so much for supporting this show. I will see you again next Tuesday for another episode of Let's Talk Food Travel Live Squared.